Oh, Jeffrey, uh, put those in the study. All right. It's crowded downtown? The greatest Mardi Gras ever. At least that's what they're saying. How is he? Not good. Not good at all. The doctor's with him now. But he wants to be advised when the relatives arrive. Those relatives of his. I'm quite sure they'll make themselves known. <laughs> Sam. Yes, Jason, what's it? How long? Oh, well, Jason, you can't exactly say. Tell me, Sam. It can come at any time now. But the fact that you're still here is a tribute to, to an inner strength that most of us don't even possess. Nonsense. It's attributable to a cross-grained orneriness. And the fact that there are one or two things left to do before I leave this earth, that's why I must stay alive at least until midnight. All right, Jason, all right. Mr. Jason Foster, a tired ancient who on this particular Mardi Gras evening will leave the earth. But before departing, he has some things to do, some services to perform, some debts to pay, and some justice to mete out. This is New Orleans Mardi Gras time. It is also the Twilight Zone. Well, Father. It was very nice and gracious of you all to come and see me. Now, I've planned for you all to have an excellent dinner this evening, and then we're going to have a surprise. We're going to have a marvelous time. And I've arranged for all of us to... to wear masks. Now, why don't you all go and prepare for dinner? We're going to have a very interesting evening. As a matter of fact, I'll guarantee it. Uh, that'll be all, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, tell me, my loved ones, uh, did you have a satisfactory dinner? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, we did, Father. Have you examined your masks? Our masks? They're, they're uh, unique, Father. They are very unique. You know, they are made by an old Cajun. I'm told that in addition to their artistic value, they have certain uh, properties. They're worn only during the Mardi Gras, and uh, there's a ritual to the wearing. One tries to select a mask that is the antithesis of what the wearer is. Father, you don't mean we have to wear these ugly things? You shall wear your masks until midnight. If any one of you should take them off, from my estate you shall each receive train fare back to Boston, and that's it. Are you feeling weaker, Father? At last, a note of hope in your voice, Emily. Why must you always say such miserable, cruel things to me? Because none of you respond to love. Emily responds only to what her petty hungers dictate. Wilfred responds only to things that have weight and bulk and value. And Paula there lives in a mirror. The world is nothing to her but a reflection of herself and her brother. Humanity to him is a small animal caught in a trap to be tormented. Without your masks, your caricatures. He's dead. Good. Now, let's celebrate. <sighs> What's the matter? What's the matter with you all? Mardi Gras incident. The dramatis personae being four people who came to celebrate and in a sense let themselves go. This they did with a vengeance. They now wear the faces of all that was inside them and they'll wear them for the rest of their lives. Said lies now to be spent in shadow. Tonight's tale of men, the macabre, and masks on the Twilight Zone. <laughs> 